Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we go over what is and what is the use of a DI box. Recently in the Home Recording Studios Facebook group, there was a question that came up about how a signal chain from an external mic pre should get into your interface. In the question, Mike had asked if the signal chain of microphone to mic preamp to audio interface is incorrect, and someone had actually told him that it should go microphone into microphone preamp into a direct box and then into his interface. The long and the short of it is no, you should go from your mic preamp into a line input of your interface. The output of a mic preamp gives you line level. But someone had told him to go into a direct box and a direct box is just a step down transformer. So it would take a higher impedance load and bring it down to microphone level, just like you would do for an instrument. And it made me think, well, why would they do this? And what is the DI box actually doing? So today we're gonna take a look at what a DI box does. On my desk, I have an old cheap DI box, but all of the major functions of any DI box on the market is inside of this and I figured it would be good to explain to you what actually is inside and what it's doing. So let's switch over to the desk. So here it is, the old Guitar Center Special, the Live Wire Solutions Direct Box, and it has all the same major features you would see on any direct box you would have out on the market. A quarter inch input and output on this side, an XLR output on this side, and a ground lift switch on this side. And then otherwise, it's just in this nice metal box. I went ahead and took the screws off so we can take a look inside. So here's the guts. Here's everything you would see inside of any DI box. There's our inputs and outputs. And you can see that it's just bridged across with these cables here. This is how you get a direct pass through from any DI box. Then it leads into this. This part right here is what makes the DI box what it is. This is a step down transformer. And you'll find all different kinds of transformers in all different kinds of DI boxes. But this is the major component of what's going on. It's taking the high impedance load of your instrument and stepping it down to a microphone impedance on this end. So you can see the wires leading into the transformer and the wires leading out that are then feeding the XLR output. And then you can see the jump wires right here that go to our ground lift switch. If you have some kind of weird buzz or hum when you plug something in, you can use this switch to try and eliminate the hum and lift the ground. And that's it. All of the parts that we just saw is what makes up the bare bones essentials of any DI box. But now you may be asking, well, why would I use a DI box versus an instrument input on my interface? On my Apollo Twin, I actually have a guitar input right here on the front face. And I can take my guitar quarter inch out of that straight into the input here. But is there any difference between going into the Apollo straight or going into my direct box and then out from that XLR into a mic preamp? To answer this question, let's dive into the DAW and we'll take a listen to some stuff that I was working on. So here we are inside the session, and just for reference, I have an instance of Steven Slate Drums 5 that's just giving me a little beat for this thing that I wrote earlier today. Then here, I have two bass tracks followed up by two guitar tracks. Now the signal path for these are designated by the track names. What my signal path was is I went from my guitar or my bass, quarter inch out of it, into the input jack of the direct box. I then went out of the direct box into the instrument input on my Apollo Twin. Doing that, I was able to take one performance and record two separate DIs, one from the live wire and one straight into the Apollo Twin with no effects going on on the Apollo end with all of its DSP that it offers. So we just have raw DI tracks in our session right now. You can see I went ahead and put an instance of Ampere on all of my tracks because I wanted it to actually sound like a distorted guitar and something heavy. You'll hear it when we get into it. But we'll also go ahead and take those off, bump up the gain of our signals so that you can hear it better and hear that real, mm, not so pleasant sound of a DI guitar. So first up, we're gonna listen to the line going straight into the Apollo 
for both the bass and guitar tracks. So that was Into the Apollo. What's the difference if we go with the DI track? Again, all of the settings for the plugins are an exact copy. I just found what I liked on the Apollo and dragged it over to the Livewire. And here's a quick AB between the two. Having these plugins in may be giving you a false idea of what's actually happening. So let's go ahead and take all of these, put them in the bypass, and now we'll solo everything and do ABs from there. I'm gonna clip gain these things up a little bit so you can hear everything better, but you're now hearing just the raw DIs of the direct box from Livewire or the Apollo Twin input. There's very minor differences between the two direct ins, but it's really up to you as the engineer to decide which one you need and which one you like better. Why don't you go ahead and let me know what you thought of these two in the comments below. You also need to weigh your options of what you're doing at the time, how many direct inputs you need, and what features you need of a DI box. There's DI boxes out there that have tone control, like the Avalon U5. There's different tone shaping options on the Avalon U5 that allow you to modify your DI signal on the way in, which also gives you a slightly different sound if you do reamping later. Or you can get a higher level transformer. Like I said before, the Livewire Direct Box is a cheap entry level DI box. It has all the components that you need, but maybe you want upgraded parts within. The radial DIs all have Jensen transformers, and Jensen transformers are a much higher end transformer. The efficiency is better, there's not as much coloration on the tone, but this is all getting into like guitar purist talk. One of the benefits of using the input on the Apollo is now I have the ability to use some of the UA plugins directly on my source and track them live. Then I don't have a clean DI, but I actually have what is a simulated guitar. Also in the Universal Audio stuff, they have higher end components, which is why it has a higher price tag as opposed to the Guitar Center Direct Box. That's all for now. I'm curious what you thought of the A-B differences between the two DI boxes. So let me know in the comments below. If you found anything in this video informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in a comment and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.